Now at the Politocrat Daily Podcast online store, you can get the brand new Spring Spectacular Collection. Designed by yours truly, Omar Moore. If you like t-shirts, sweatshirts, mouse pads, or pens, or anything else that you might use or wear on a pretty much daily basis, please come on down to the Politocrat Daily Podcast online store at the-politocrat.myshopify.com or you can go to the podcast website at thepolitocrat.com and scroll down on the homepage to find the online store. I'm firmly, firmly confident that you'll like what you see. So, please, take a look and buy some of these wonderful items you will see. Thank you very much for your support. I don't in any way encourage black people to go out and initiate acts of aggression indiscriminately against whites. But I do believe that the black man in the United States and any human being anywhere is well within his right to do whatever is necessary by any means necessary to protect his life and property, especially in a a country where the federal government itself has proven that it is either uh, unable or unwilling to protect the lives and property of those human beings. Who was that? As I promise every day in this month of February, the first month of what I call Black History Year, I will play a voice to you and you can if you choose to let me know who it was that you just heard tweet me at the popcorn r-e-e-l or you can email the podcast at the following email address politocrat pod at gmail.com The book today that I would recommend to you to read is a book called Black Tudors. Tudors being spelled T-U-D-O-R-S. It's written by Dr. Miranda Kaufman. Her last name is spelled K-A-U-F M as in Mike A double N. Black Tudors, The Untold Story by Dr. Miranda Kaufman. It's a book I highly recommend. Welcome to The Politocrat. I'm Omar Moore. It is Tuesday, February the 2nd, 2021. On this edition of The Politocrat, the look at Captain Sir Tom Moore, his life, at least the last 10 months of his life, were just remarkable, as was his entire life. I say was because Captain Sir Tom Moore passed away today at the age of 100. And I want to just spend a few minutes paying tribute to him. That's this episode about Captain Sir Tom Moore. Coming up next. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark you'll never walk alone that was just a small portion of the tune that was recorded back in I don't know when it was last year but it was last year in 2020 
Captain Sir Tom Moore became the oldest chart topper in the UK. A number one hit song, of course, originally recorded by Jerry and the Pacemakers. You'll never walk alone. And Captain Sir Tom Moore won't ever walk alone. He was a World War II hero, veteran for the Air Force, I believe the Royal Air Force, and he fought for the UK, fought for England. And I must say, as a member of the Global Moore family, he certainly was one of our many wonderful ambassadors. The Global Moore family, and I'm proud to be a member of that family, um, more often than not do good things. And if I may selfishly say so, um, and maybe self-righteously say so, um, but one of the members of that family, of the Global Moore family, was, of course, Captain Sir Tom Moore. And um, he was the epitome of courage, hope, optimism, and gave people great inspiration as well. During these very difficult times, these last 10 months plus, um, nearly a whole year, uh, of this pandemic now in the US and the UK and particularly in the United Kingdom in England where uh, Captain Sir Tom is from um, and he lived uh, uh, for a long time in Bedfordshire um, Captain Sir Tom was a real legendary figure I mean he gave people those things I talked about, and they were rooted in something. Not people just talking out of their you-know-wheres. But Captain Sir Tom had seen it all and lived it all in his 100 years. And when he spoke about courage and hope and optimism and pride and the ability to bounce back, it was one of those things you believed you believed it wasn't sloganeering. It wasn't an emptiness. It wasn't rhetoric. The kind that you hear from politicians um, at number 10 Downing Street, for example. But this was what Captain Sir Tom said was grounded in a reality and an understanding of just what it would take and what we as human beings are capable of. And so when he passed away today, I um, was very sad and very saddened by his departure. Captain Sir Tom had been admitted to hospital uh, within the last three weeks or so. And apparently he had pneumonia. And it turned out that literally a few days ago, he um, had been uh, tested positive for coronavirus. And it was literally two or three days ago that that information was furnished to the public. And I, um, I'm sure not alone uh, in this sentiment, um, really did fear the worst for Captain Sir Tom, but um, when I heard the news today, I was still nonetheless very sad, as I'm sure many of you were. The tributes have been pouring in all over the world, um, certainly all over England and all over the UK, but I think beyond, certainly from here in California, here in the United States, um, I have uh, certainly added my uh, condolences uh, to the uh, Moore family in Bedfordshire and beyond. and But also, I mean, I know that people around the world um, looked at him as an inspirational figure because that's exactly uh, who he was. And his courage, knowing that he had fought for his country, knowing that he was someone who believed in people, 
knowing he was someone that believed in the human spirit. Those are the kinds of things that fuel me, actually. Um, Because there is this knowledge that there are people who care, that there are people in this world who do care, who do care about wanting to make this world better. And Captain Sir Tom was one of them, raising money for charity. Um, One of the things that I think brought him back to the uh, imagination of the British public, the UK public, was his walk for charity. He would walk around his garden, his yard, um, do laps, and he was going to do 100 laps around his uh, backyard using his uh, his walker, his stroller, his uh, uh, walking uh, uh, accompaniment, and, you know, 100 laps around his yard. It wasn't exactly a small yard, by the way. And he did 100 laps as a 99-year-old, raising money for charity. It was, again, as I may have mentioned, it was his, and if I didn't mention, I'll mention it now, it was his initial intention to raise something like two or 3,000 pounds for charity, to do these walks around his uh, garden, his lap, you know, the, this, these laps around his garden, his yard in Bedfordshire, in Bedford. But he ended up raising over 34 million pounds. Over 34 million pounds to charity. And that's 34 million pounds for charity. That I just, this is a, person who was 99 at the time and he hit his 100th birthday literally you know not too long ago and he filled people with pride i mean this was i think last summer he he hit his 100th birthday and the cards that poured in not only just in england for him but around the world people need somebody And it doesn't have to be one person. It could be any number of people. But people need a someone to rally around, to ground their own sense of feeling and humanity in, just to let them know that they are not alone, that there are so many people, your support network, your friends, your trusted friends, your partner, your 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 husband, wife, you know, spouse, what however you define boyfriend, girlfriend, person, whoever that is, who you anchor your hope and dream around and through and together with and in other people who are like minded and people who believe in human progress in this world. And not only human progress but the planetary progress so that we do have a better climate so that we can activate ourselves in fighting for a better climate even though the odds are so much against us in this moment and we've got young people out here now who are fighting for a better tomorrow today and I can name them you know Vanessa Nakate and and Greta um, Thunberg and, and so many other people who they're barely 20 years old, some of them, maybe not even 20 yet. And they understand the urgency of these moments we are in. Captain Sir Tom Moore understood. He understood at 99. He understood at 100. He understood years ago when he fought valiantly for the United Kingdom in World War II. And it's that optimism and that spirit that kept him going. That he lived to see victories. He fought for his country victoriously in that battle against Nazism and and fascism. And of course, it's a battle that is not complete yet, as we all know too very well.
Captain Satom Moore was an inspiration to millions of people. And again, I think beyond England and beyond the United Kingdom at large. And I must say that it's really an honor to have known who he was, much less to have known him. And I never got to meet him in person. Um, but he is a member of the extended Moore family. And I am glad to have known that he exists and existed. I, I am beyond um, proud of who he was, inspired by his good example, his positive example. And he has left behind so many wonderful memories of his courage at this time, at a time where there are people who don't want to wear a mask. There are people who don't want to stay away from others. They want to have COVID parties. And you think about that, and then you think about Captain Sir Tom Moore, who did such selfless things. He didn't have to fight for his country, but duty called. And he answered the call as did so many others who fought for their countries here in the UK and abroad everywhere else. When Captain Sir Tom Moore became the oldest chart topper in UK history, in fact, probably world history, recording a song, You'll Never Walk Alone, which, as I may have mentioned earlier, Jerry and the Pacemakers recorded that song first, as best I know. He was, I believe, 99 when he recorded that, maybe 100 when he recorded that tune, and it was number one on the English and the UK charts. Um, it was just moving to hear him. And I am, again, very thankful that he was here. And for all that he has done to ex give people something, because sometimes, you know, I have to say politicians, there's only maybe one or two of them who actually can fit the bill actually of inspiring people. I mean, there are others. There are lots of them on local levels and in Congress. There's a few that I can think of right now. And I can think of a few from the past. Barbara Jordan, Shirley Chisholm, as we go through Black History Year. Um, and numerous other people that come to mind immediately who are really good people who inspire. You know, I, I think of Gabrielle Giffords in this moment. I think of a number of other people who inspire and who really give you something because they've been through it to give it to you. And so Captain Tom Moore is of one of those as well. He was one of those. So I must say, um, it is with great sadness, but also truly great appreciation and admiration and respect, respect that I have for Captain Sir Tom Moore. And uh, I want to thank his family. And I do want to send, uh, I think most importantly, my deepest, most heartfelt condolences to the family of Captain Sir Tom Moore. Um, I know that Hannah, I believe, is one of his daughters, one of his children. Uh, and I, I do want to say to her my deepest condolences to you. And I'm so uh, terribly sorry for your loss. Um, Captain Sir Tom was a remarkable human being. Uh, he passed away surrounded by his family um, and the rules... Uh, the lockdown rules in the UK were uh, breached and done so as an exception for palliative care, um, an exception um, for this particular time, for someone of the magnitude of this figure, a legendary figure. Um, so those rules were uh, broken uh, for that reason, so that his family um, could see him uh, in his final days and hours and so that he could also have the comfort at least of transitioning um, with his family there at his side, at his bedside in hospital. 
How do you measure um, a life? How do you do that? Because we've, we've had people just this last week and a half, we've had legendary people and anybody, of course, whether they're legends or not, this question applies. How do you measure a life? How do you measure a life? Is it in what someone does? Is it in how they love? Is it in something else? Or is it all of these things? Is it in who they are? Is it in what they do? Or is it in, like I said, is it in the kind of person they are? And I submit that I don't care what a person's title is in this world. You know, whether you are an attorney, whether you are a doctor, whether you are an entertainer, a politician, some kind of celebrity, whether you're an influencer on social media, whether you are someone who works in sanitation or whether you work as a frontline grocery store worker. It's the kind of person you are that counts. All the titles in the world could not defeat that truth. It is how we carry ourselves, what we do, and how we live. And the kind of example that we can put forth to others, especially in trying times, times that overwhelm, times that test, and times that sometimes even defeat us. And we look to people. We must look within as well to find those sources of inspiration. And sometimes we have to look deep within and dig deep. But there is no shame, no shame at all, in acknowledging that support networks and support systems in these times are the most important. And also, the people you love, the people who love you, those in your family, your partner, your spouse, the significant other, and that circle of people you trust. And Captain Sir Tom Moore embodied trust and confidence. He embodied inspiration, hope. And he had an unconquerable spirit. Rest in power, young man. Rest in power. Captain Sir Tom Moore. May your memory forever be, forever, forever and ever be a blessing. Young man, Godspeed to you. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of The Politocrat. I'm Omar Moore.